Yeah, what's going on everybody? Sal Pa King Carter here. Look at this freak face I got on right now. <laughs> I'm always trying to do a little shout out to the ladies, of course. That's my MO, man. I'm always, you know, talking to the ring girls, taking them backstage, you know, for a little fun afterwards. Hey, man, drinks on me. That's all I can say. But I ain't tricking, though. But nah, man, let's get into this UFC fight. If you guys are new to my channel or you don't understand this series, let me tell you a little bit of something about David the King Carter. First of all, I'm 46 and 0. I done beat down just about everybody. I done fought just about anybody. And I will literally take on anybody that challenges me. Now, the reason why I came into this Pride tournament for one of the last few fights of my career, I decided, you know what? Let me take it easy. Let me see if there's anybody in the Pride that's actually worth fighting. Now, you guys can see I'm going against Ryan Bader. You guys might think, oh, he's not that great of a fighter. Mm, he looks so-so. Well, one thing I can tell you, this is a game. This is not real life. Every time somebody watches one of my videos, they take from this, okay, let me Google him real quick. Let me look at his Wikipedia. Let me see if he has any wins to losses. Now, you guys know all the popular fighters, of course, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Some fighters in this game, they may be historic, but they aren't that great in this game. Some fighters may not be so-so in, in the real life, but in this game, they are monsters. They are people you don't want to mess with. Now, Ryan Bader, I'm going to tell you straight up right now, he's one of those guys you don't want to mess with. And this is why. As soon as I took him to the ground, I knew, okay, this is what I got to do. I got to fight for a better position. But guess what? This dude is blocking my transitions. Guess what? He's reversing my transitions. And initially, he was able to kick me off without any problems. Now, in the first little fight that we had, the little exchange, you guys might have noticed that he was hitting me with haymaker after haymaker. Yes, this dude is tagging me. Now, I was trying to put my hands up. I was trying to block. My clinch, I mean, not clinch, but my stand-up striking defense is that a, it's a little high, but he was still able to punch through my blocks. He was able to get his haymakers off, and I'm going to tell you this right now. This dude uppercut is something else. I'm going to tell you right now, I should have been rocked time after time after these uppercuts. You guys can see it here. He's throwing haymakers. He's throwing uppercuts. He's literally tagging me, and I can't do anything about it. Now... Whenever I'm getting my behind beat, whenever I'm getting my head taken off, my first thing that I think is, okay, you know what? I need to take this fight to the ground. I need to take some type of advantage, you know, win in position, get a couple cheap shots in on the ground, whereas though he can barely defend himself punch-wise and do what I need to do. Now, while he was using his hands, I was trying to use my feet. Now, that was the biggest mistake that I was making this entire fight. I'm trying to use my feet. I'm trying to use my knees. I'm not trying to use what God gave me in these hands. Now, of course, he's taking position, but I'm able to kick him off. You know, I'm I'm not the worst guy on the ground. I'm not the worst person that can't block any transitions, that can't get a person up off me. But what I will tell you is, those haymakers didn't stop. <laughs> those uppercuts didn't stop. But I will tell you one thing that I added in. I added in a few combinations. I, I added in the jab, jab, kick, the jab, jab, sway, uppercut, and all of that. But I'm telling you now, it still wasn't working. I still couldn't find out what was needed to win this fight. So you know what I did? I went back to my basic instincts. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into... I mean, amazing, killer, you can't even mess with me more. <laughs> like, literally, what I did was, I said, you know what, I'm going to take the guy to the ground. I'm going to block any transitions that he tries, and then I'm going to fight for a better position, and then I'm just going to ground and pound every time. Now, of course, you guys know that the ground and pound works. It's nothing else like it. And one thing that definitely helps when you ground and pound and you start getting people tired, they start making mistakes. Now, you guys saw that a couple of those kicks started to land. You was like, whoa, they weren't landing in the beginning. He was blocking them. But now that, you know, his eyes are getting puffy, his stamina is starting to low, you know, I'm able to hit him with a few different shots. Now, of course, I don't have some of the best takedown defense. So, of course, when guys shoot to take me down, they're going to take me down. No homo. But 
I will tell you this. I am resilient. I'm going to get up. I'm going to come back. Now, he's blocking my transitions. He's he, look, look at this. He's literally killing me on the ground game. And as soon as I kick him off, it's going to be a different story. You're going to see a totally different person. Because check this out. I, I, know, I know a lot of people are like, why did you even try submission from right there? Well, look. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. In order for me to get up off the ground, I had to try something. I had to do something. So I felt as though submission would suffice, but it's not helping. So my main thing that I tried to do was get him off me, block his transitions, and get up off the ground. Now, you see that I'm trying to tire him out, you know, get my kicks in there and everything, and I'm making sure that I stay away. Now, you guys see that move right there, right? That flying knee. Guess what? I upgraded the flying knee, which means it's on level three. Now, did you guys just see that knockout right there? I don't know. Y'all might have to run that back. All right, you know what? Y'all don't got to run that back. Just watch right here. After I celebrate, do my thing, you guys will see the craziest replay you've ever seen in UFC history. Now, one thing I will say. It's a lot of people that's always been in the comment section telling me new moves to get. And this was definitely one of those moves. Look at that flying knee right there. One thing I will say, this is probably the best move I've ever seen in UFC history. Real rap. Look at that. Right on the button. It's nothing you can do against that move. Literally nothing. I don't think you can even block. Like, look, it, it looked like it didn't even hit him from right there. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Hey, man, animations went out, I guess. But I hope you guys like this video. Check out that tall trophy. I think that trophy is taller than the ref. I'm not going to make any promises, but I think it's taller than him. But you guys check me out in my belt right there. But uh, I wanted to get in a few words from Mike Goldberg. I'm sorry, Goldberg. But uh, I'll be right back, y'all. Let's get into it. You've had a fantastic career, but the day comes when every fighter has to hang up his gloves. This next fight will be your last. So let's end on a winning note. All right, you guys heard it here first, man. The next fight will be my last. Oh, man, I can't wait to schedule a fight. All I can say is I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Oops, spoiler alert. Yes, I will be fighting Rashad Evans. But uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to hit me up. It's about to go down. Me and Rashad.